How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 5. This video is going to be helping you achieve the best gameplay experience possible by increasing your FPS, reducing your input latency and fixing any stuttering issues you might be experiencing. If you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. Alongside let me know of your results, questions, queries, tips or tricks in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a new video goes live on the channel. So jumping straight on into the guide. First of all, what we're going to be doing is actually ensuring that we're running on the latest October 2020 update to Windows, which is 20H2. This update is completely free and easy to obtain for anyone running on a Windows PC, and it's highly recommended, as the October update to Windows 10 is actually one of the best builds for gaming in around about the last year or two. So if you want the best FPS possible, make sure to update to the latest version of Windows. If you need to update Windows, navigate inside of the description down below where you'll be finding the Windows 10 update link. Once you've clicked on that, you've then be brought to the download Windows 10 YouTube utility from Microsoft. Go ahead and select this. This will then download the Windows 10 upgrade tool. You'll then simply open up the program. It will detect which version of Windows is the latest for you and get you up and running with all of the latest files. This will just simply update the pre-existing installation of Windows on your PC. Now jumping straight on into the optimizations. First of all, we're going to be navigating down to the bottom left hand side, clicking on Windows and typing in keyboard. We're then going to be going inside of the keyboard tab with inside of here. Once this tab opens up, you want to go to the character repeat screen. Make sure that the top option for repeat delay is set to short and repeat rate is set all the way over too fast. Once that's done, press apply and press OK. This will allow Windows to detect those multiple inputs of the same button much faster and more efficiently. We're then going to apply a similar optimization to our mouse. So now we get to the bottom left hand side once again, type in mouse space settings, then go to the mouse settings tab. With inside of here, navigate to the top right hand side, go to additional mouse options. With inside of here, navigate over to pointer options found up here on the top. Ensure that enhanced pointer precision is actually unchecked on your PC. We then want to take our mouse pointer speed and set it to the sixth notch. So what we're going to do is drag all the way to the left. I like to use my arrow keys for this. The option we now have this on is number one. So we're going to be going to two, three, four, five, and six. Once that's then been set, navigate to the bottom right hand side, press apply. Moving along to more performance specific optimizations, we can navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, click on game mode settings. With inside of here, we're then going to ensure that the Windows game mode is actually switched to the on position. We can then go ahead and exit out, navigate back down to the bottom left once again, this time typing in GPU space settings. We're going to be going inside of the graphics settings tab with inside of here, navigating to the top left hand side. Once inside of this tab, if your version of Windows, graphics card drivers and hardware where it's supported, you'll have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you do have this option available to you and switch this to the on position. Now, regardless if you have this option or not, we're also gonna navigate down to the bottom where it says browse. Once the file explorer opens up, we're then going to be navigating inside of the folder where Fortnite is installed to on our PC. Simply navigate to the top right hand side and search for Fortnite launcher. Dot exe. Once you find this, go ahead and right click, then click on open file location. Once inside of here, we're then going to go up to the Fortnite client win64 shipping.exe, select this, then select add. Once this has been added, navigate down to the options menu, then navigate down to high performance, select save, and we can then exit out. We're now going to be applying the application or exe fixes to the game. These are quite common fixes, but they are definitely worthwhile installing. Navigate to your file explorer at the bottom, navigate over to this PC. Once again, search for Fortnite launcher.exe, go ahead and right click on the launcher, open file location. Once we're inside of here, we're then going to be going back over to the Fortnite client Win64 shipping exe once again, right click, go down to properties, go to compatibility, disable the full screen optimizations, select change high DPI, override high DPI scaling behavior, apply, okay, and apply. We can then apply a very quick optimization towards system cleanup by navigating to the bottom left hand side once again, typing in percent temp percent this time and pressing enter. Once you've been entered into this folder, we're then going to simply highlight and select every single file and folder with inside of here, right click and select delete. You're more than likely going to be met with this prompt. If you are, click do this for all current items and hit skip. Everything else we've just deleted is an excess dump or caching file, which was just sitting on your PC, soaking up resources and valuable space. It's recommended to repeat that step around about once every month or so. What we're now going to go ahead and do is actually ensure that we're not running on any old launch options for Fortnite, as with the latest update on most modern hardware, using launch options can actually take away from FPS. So we're going to be navigating inside of the Epic Games launcher, navigating down to the bottom left hand side to settings, with inside of here proceed to scroll all the way down to Fortnite, click on the drop down menu, if you do have the option for additional command line arguments checked, go ahead and check this box. Make sure that you then remove any and all launch options with inside of here. What we can then go ahead and do is simply uncheck this option, click on the drop down menu once again, and go back to the home page. Whilst we're on the topic of cleaning out all old and updated techniques, it's recommended to actually go ahead and delete all of your old Fortnite configs and settings and start with brand new files, which can be more heavily optimized for the latest seasons. By all means, if you just wish to try this out, I'm gonna be showing you how to back up your files so you can simply reinstall them back if you do forget any of your settings and mouse sensitivity 
key stuff. Now we get to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in percent app data percent and press enter. With inside of here, navigate up to the navigation bar at the top, select app data, gun start of local, scroll down to the F section and we're going to be looking for Fortnite game. Once inside of here, I'd recommend going ahead and simply copying this, going to your desktop and pasting it. We then just simply created a backup of the Fortnite game folder, which contains all of our configs and settings, which will be as old as the first time you installed Fortnite on your PC. So if you do wish to get your configs back, you can just simply use the folder we've just backed up. But what I'd actually recommend going ahead and doing is going back over to the local folder, right clicking and actually deleting the Fortnite game folder. Once you've done that, next time you boot into Fortnite, that will generate you brand new configs and these can be much more heavily optimized and remove any of the old stuff which isn't needed from older seasons. Jumping back into more performance specific optimizations we can navigate to the bottom left hand side this time typing in power space plan. With inside of it go up to the edit power plan option go to the top to the navigation bar select power options then go down to show additional plans. For those of you running on an intel based cpu you want to be going with the default windows high performance power plan. For any of you that are running on an amd ryzen based system you want to be going with any of the amd ryzen and specific power plans like these here. You may not have high performance available to you, so just go with the best AMD Ryzen specific power plan you can go with. To select the power plan, just simply navigate over to the left hand side of the power plan, select the option next to it, and we've now successfully set up that power plan. This now leads us on to the part in the video where we're actually going to be applying some GPU specific optimizations, which are incredibly important for the best FPS possible. Now, before we do this, assuming that we're running on a brand new update to Fortnite, hopefully I've updated our windows to the latest version, it's highly recommended to ensure that you're running on the latest GPU driver as well, the only information you need to gather is what GPU you have installed to your PC. Easiest way of doing this is to right click on your desktop, you'll either be seeing the Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon settings panel. If you're not seeing either of those, navigate down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. Inside of task manager, navigate up to performance, then navigate down to GPU. On the top right hand side, you'll then be seeing the name of the graphics card in which you are using. You want to be looking if you have an Nvidia or an AMD Radeon card. With that information, you'll then navigate inside of the description down below and click on the corresponding GPU update link for either AMD Radeon or Nvidia. Once you've updated your graphics card drivers, we then need to ensure that we're running on the best settings for those drivers to ensure that we're getting the lowest level of input latency and more importantly, the best FPS possible. Go ahead and right click on your desktop and open up the Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon settings panel. For those of you running on a Nvidia graphics card, navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Ensure that the use advanced 3D image settings option in the middle is checked, then press apply. Navigate to the top left hand side once again to manage 3D settings. With inside of here, I then want you to go ahead and simply pause the video, copy all of my options which are selected here. Go ahead and unpause the video. Once again, copy all of the options you see below. For OpenGL rendering GPU, set this to your graphics card. Once again, proceed to pause the video, copy all of the settings shown. Once everything is selected, go to the bottom right hand side, press apply, and we can then exit out of the NVIDIA control panel. For those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, right click on your desktop, open up inside of the Radeon control panel, navigate inside of the global graphics tab and simply follow all of the options shown on screen now. Once again, pause the video. Once all of the options have been selected, ensure to apply those options and we're then good to proceed on. This now leads us onto some incredibly worthwhile optimizations if you run Discord in the background whilst playing the game. Navigate to the bottom left hand side to your user settings cog. With inside of here, we can start off by going over to the overlay tab. We're then going to go up to the top to enable in-game overlay and ensure this is actually switched off. We can then navigate to the bottom left hand side to the appearance tab, scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to be going over to the option titled hardware acceleration. Now for those of you running on a medium end PC all the way down to the ultra low end potato laptops, you want to ensure that hardware acceleration is actually enabled. For those of you running on medium end PCs all the way up to the best hardware possible, you actually want to go ahead and actually disable this option. Before we jump into the game, we're actually going to be applying one of, if not the best optimization within inside of this entire video. This comes in the form of the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner Program or ISLC. This features the widely recommended time resolution application within inside of the program, but it also features a a secondary feature set which can actually keep a reserved pool of RAM open in the background so you're not running into any RAM bottlenecks or running into all of your system memory being used at once. Cannot recommend this program enough. If this does interest you, navigate down to the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List link in the description down below. With inside of it, simply scroll all the way down to the official download here button. Select this button, the program will then be downloaded. Once the program is downloaded, simply go ahead and press open. I'd recommend extracting this to your desktop. You then be met with an ISLC folder on your desktop. Double click, open up the folder, then double click on the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program and select yes. For the first box, we're going to be ensuring this is set to 1024. For the second box, this needs to be set to half of your system memory. You can see your total system memory here in the top. So for me, that's 32,000. So half of that is going to be 16,000. Once that's done, navigate over to the right hand side to wanted term resolution. Ensure this is set to 0 0.50. Use the delete key to remove the other values. Check the option for enable custom term resolution. Go to the ISLC polling rate. For high end PC, set this to 500. For lower end PC, set this to 1000. Once that's done, navigate to the right hand side to start, click on purge standby list, 
minimize the program and I'd recommend running that every single time you play any game. Whilst that's running in the background, we can now go ahead and boot into the game to finalize our in-game options and achieve the best performance possible. Once you boot into the game for the first time after deleting your old config files, it's gonna ask you if you want to find the best settings. Go ahead and press confirm for this. We're then going to be going inside of settings. For the first option, we're going to ensure that we're running on full screen mode as this is going to be giving you the best input latency and FPS. It's then recommended to set your resolution to the maximum resolution supported by your monitor. We can then navigate down to frame rate limit. For the lowest level of input latency possible and the best FPS, Yes, it's recommended to actually go ahead and select this to unlimited. Any and all options in which I skip over inside of this video, feel free to set them to any value you wish to do so as they do not affect performance and are just down to personal preference. We're going to be scrolling down to view distance. I'd recommend setting this to either near or for higher end PCs, set this to medium. Shadows are going to be switched to off for the best performance possible. If you do wish to keep shadows on though, go with medium at the highest setting. Anti-aliasing is recommended to have switched to the off position. Textures are recommended to have set to high unless you're on a complete potato PC. Effect should be set down to low, post-processing low, V-Sync should be turned off unless you're using FreeSync or G-Sync, Motion Blur is also recommended to have switched off, Show FPS should be switched on. Now this option is going to depend on your system specs. For those of you running on medium end gaming PCs or older gaming PCs, you want to be going with DirectX 11. For those of you running on relatively new, higher end gaming PCs, it's recommended to go with DirectX 12 as that will be giving you the best performance possible. I'm going to be going with DX12. Allow multi-threaded rendering should be enabled, GPU crash debugging off, latency markers off, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. For those of you running on an NVIDIA 2060 or an NVIDIA 1000 or 900 series graphics card, I'd recommend going with On plus Boost. For me, I'm going to be going with On, Latency Flash is going to be switched off, and we're then going to navigate down to DLSS. This is a fantastic option, but only for some graphics cards, as higher end GPUs actually do not benefit from using DLSS with inside of Fortnite. If you're running at 1080p or even 1440p, I'd recommend actually turning DLSS off for the best performance possible. For those of you running on 4K, I'd recommend recommend going ahead and actually switching NVIDIA DLSS to either performance or balanced. The only other time I'd recommend using DLSS is if you like to bump all of your in-game settings up and go with a higher visual fidelity. We can then proceed to scroll all the way back up to the top and navigate over to 3D resolution. There's going to be recommended resolutions which can be found on the right hand side of the screen now. The lower the percentage of your 3D resolution, the worse and more blurry your game is going to look, but the better your performance is going to be. So what I'd recommend doing at the end of this video once you've set all of your other settings, boot into the game, come over to your 3D resolution, set it to about 90%, press apply, go back inside of your game, see how the game looks. If you're happy with how the game looks, navigate back inside of the option and proceed to set this lower and lower and lower until you find your fine balance of visual fidelity and FPS. Go to the bottom right hand side and press apply. We can then proceed to go up to the main settings cog found up here in the top, proceed to scroll all the way down. I'd recommend turning NVIDIA highlights to the off position. Also navigating down to record replays, large team replays and creative mode replays and I'd recommend actually switching all of those options off. Another really handy tool in which you can enable inside of your in-game options is to navigate up to this menu you found up here in the top and navigate down to the latency debug stats. This is a great tool for actually monitoring your input latency live with inside of the game. I'd recommend switching this to the on position and further fiddling around with your in-game settings and seeing how your latency is affected in real time. This can really help you dial in all of your in-game settings for the best input latency possible on your machine. Once you've completely set up your game, the only other option I'd recommend tweaking around with and seeing how it affects your performance after every optimization is complete is going to be the DirectX version. Switch between the two and find which works best for you after all of the optimizations and in-game settings have been applied. We're now going to be covering some more advanced optimizations in which some of you that are really serious about getting the best performance possible can follow along with. To set up a system restore point, navigate to the bottom left hand side, type create a restore point just like so, then go to create a restore point. With inside of the drop down menu, proceed to scroll down to your local disk C drive, then go to configure. With inside of here, ensure that turn on system protection is checked, then go down to maximum usage and set this to about 5%. Then press apply, then press OK. We can then proceed to go to the bottom right hand side to create this time, and we're simply going to be calling this something we can remember. Then go ahead and press create. Navigate to the bottom left hand side to the windows button, type in reg edit just like so and press enter. We're going to be navigating up to H key current user, double click, navigate down to system, double click, navigate down to game config store, then navigate inside of the children folder. We right click on the children folder, select find. We're then going to be searching for Fortnite. Then go ahead and press enter. What we're going to be doing is navigating over to the selected folder on the left hand side, right clicking, selecting export. We're then going to select desktop and we're just going to be calling this Fortnite 
backup. As you can see, that's now created a registry backup, which we can simply use to revert this optimization if we wish to do so. We're now going to go back over to the folder, right click, and actually select delete, then select yes. That's going to remove the default Windows optimization profile built for Fortnite. Once we've applied that optimization, we're then going to go back to the home screen of registry editor, this time going into HKey local machine. Go inside of software, proceed to scroll down to the M section, go to Microsoft, the bottom to the W section, go inside of Windows NT, go to M once again to multimedia, double click, then click on system profile once. Once inside of it, go to the top right hand side to system responsiveness. Change the value of this to one, press OK. Exit out of the Windows registry. For the last and final advanced optimization we're going to be covering is going to come in the form of the MSI utility. Download link can be found in the description down below. Go ahead and simply click download on this program. Once the utility has been downloaded, I recommend dragging this onto your desktop. Right click and go ahead and run this as an administrator. Once the program opens up, only follow these steps I'm going to be showing you in this video. Do not be tempted to change any other options with inside of this program, even if you think it could be beneficial to your PC because you could cause some serious issues and slowdowns. The only thing we're going to be doing is navigating over to our graphics card on the left hand side. So once you've found your graphics card, go ahead and highlight this. On the right hand side, you'll then see MSI and there'll be a box next to it. We're going to be ensuring that the box for MSI mode is actually checked. We can also navigate to the right hand side to our priority, click on the drop down menu, and we can actually go ahead and set this to high. Do not change anything else with inside of this tool. Navigate to the top right hand side, select apply, we can then go ahead and hit refresh and you should then see that the option has now been selected and our priority should now be high. Again, if you do run into any issues, go back to the system restore point in which we set earlier or simply boost into the MSI utility and just simply uncheck the mode for MSI mode and change the priority back to undefined. And there you guys have it. That is my ultimate FPS increase guide for Fortnite chapter two, season five. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do remember to leave a like as it does help me out tremendously. And let me know of your results, questions, queries, tips or tricks in that comment section down below. And again, if you do enjoy content like this, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a new video goes live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.